hello friends so once again welcome you to my channel till now in our this computer organization architecture course we have seen basics of computer organization architecture then instruction set addressing mode stack subroutines and all after that we have seen control unit chapter and two approaches of control unit design all these things till now we have completed so next we will move to another very important component of our computer system that is memory in this chapter basically we will be discussing about main memory because see memory when we say memory then your secondary memory is also there main memory is there but when we say only the word memory we will understand we are talking about main memory so this chapter is about this only main memory component right how it is designed and all those things will be there so see the first we'll see some basic concepts related to memory so see we need to connect our memory to the processor then only this memory chip is in a usable state right memory is a chip where we can store information in the form of one and zero right so this chip we need to connect to our processor so whenever we are connecting one memory chip to the processor basically we have got four connections to do those are see any memory chip i'll start see any memory chip we will be having the address lines coming to it and data lines are there those are bidirectional one is your read write line that is direction control whether data will come to the memory or data will go from the memory another one important line is there chip select so these four connections are there in a memory chip so that we need to connect to the other party to connect it to the the other component right so here see our memory here basically we have shown this memory is there and in this memory the number of locations is your 2k 2k addressable locations are there and word length is given as n bits right and see uh, this uh, so what will be the length of your address k bits so this k bits will be coming from somewhere to the memory so, and that somewhere will be always the processor because processor is the master of the system so processor will give the address from that address we will perform our memory operation what are memory operations read and write only two operations are there and whenever we perform memory operation either data will come from the memory uh, to the processor right this side and uh, if we are doing a write operation data will go from the mdr to your memory so these lines are bidirectional right and then please understand this is a bidirectional connection though it was not there in our diagram originally so it is a bidirectional connection data lines are always bidirectional and then control lines on the control lines we have that read write line right that chip select line so all these lines are there connected here so in this memory see k bits are there for addressing one location that means what will be the number of locations 2k and if it is said that the uh, addressable unit is byte that means it is 2kb right 2kb memory is there right n bit is your data bus meaning is the in one memory operation maximum n number of bits we can read or write right so this is how the processor is going to processor is connected to the memory please understand whenever we are connecting memory to the processor we require three set of connections one is your address data and the third one is control lines see till now i have not told what is this chip select line i will be talking about this very shortly right basically in our system we will be in multi chip memory environment only single chip of memory is not going to provide me my memory capacity so we'll be having number of memory chips smaller size together they will comprise our required memory size so whenever we have multiple chips then from which particular memory chip right now we are talking or we are performing a read write operation to understand that to know that the chip select line is there whichever chip is enable selected means chip is selected from that particular chip only data will come to the processor or data will go from the processor for a write operation 
once again i am telling this is a bidirectional connection the next one is we will see some basic uh, concepts first one is see we used to say our main memory is your random access memory we say it is ram what is the meaning of ram whenever we ask what is ram people used to say random access memory right that is fine but what does it mean it means that in your memory whatever number of locations are there so suppose it is from 0 this one so on and my last location will be 2 to the power k minus 1 if i am using k number of bits to represent a address so in my memory these many number of locations are there and the meaning of random access memory is from any one of these locations we can perform any memory operation that is read or write operation with the same speed irrespective of its location what does it mean it means that it is not the case that from this location i can perform operation faster and with this location it will be the slowest nothing like that any location from any location we can perform read or write operation with the same speed because of that the name is random access memory randomly from any location we can perform the memory operation right that is the meaning of random access memory so this is my primary memory my primary memory is ram from any location i can get data with the same speed but this is not the case with your secondary storage in secondary storage is your serial access device that means from wherever i want to read the data it depends on the position depending on the position and wherever you are currently looking at these two factors the time will vary right but in uh, in our main memory this is not the case so this uh, term is clear now what is ram next is byte addressable memory already i used to tell what is byte addressable memory meaning is uh, that with each location with each location we can store eight bits of data right 1010 anything with one location we can store eight bits of data and with one location one address is associated that is byte addressable memory next is word addressable memory first of all what is word word is nothing but the maximum number of bits the processor recognizes for any basic cpu operation or memory operation so memory operation is read or write ALU operation means CPU operation means any ALU operation, your data movement, read, write, anything. Sorry, add, subtraction like those operations. So in uh, that is my word length. So what is the meaning of word addressable memory? That means in one location, if I am storing that uh, whatever maximum number of bits I can process as a single unit. Suppose it is 32 bit. So in one location, if I am storing 32 bit. then it will be said as word addressable memory right then next one is memory capacity memory capacity already we understand where from we will find the memory capacity by looking at two factors one is what is the capacity of one location second one is what is the number of locations present in the main memory in the memory so suppose if i am using a k number of bits to represent address then how many total locations we can have 2 to the power k and if one location is holding 8 bits of data then the capacity will be said as 2k sorry 2 to the power k and b b stands for byte byte means a group of 8 bits this far is clear see one more thing we need to be very very clear with some terms like this 2 to the power 6 means 64 because slowly we will be starting numericals so there our powers of 2 concept should be very clear 2 to the power 7 is 128 2 to the power 8 is 256 then 2 to the power 9 is 512 then 2 to the power 10 is what 1024 so this we need to remember 2 to the power 20 means what 1 mega 2 to the power 30 means what 1 giga then 2 to the power 40 means what 1 tera this we need to remember because to solve numericals in the memory chapter our this powers of 2 mega giga tera kilo all these concepts should be very clear 2 to the power 5 is what 32 2 to the power 4 is 16 so this we remember because of that i started from 2 to the power 
and why i am talking in powers of 2 because i am talking for uh, i am talking for, um, for memory uh, and in the memory information will be stored in binary where the base of the number system is 2 so because of that we are talking in powers of 2 then another important topic uh, basic concept is there what is called memory access time and what is memory cycle time memory access time as the word suggest what is the time required to access access means to perform a memory operation may be read may be write so that time gap means whatever time is required for that operation is called as memory access time so the time gap between the initiation of an operation may be read or write because only two memory operations are there and completion of that operation initiation of a memory operation means what when you have given your read signal or write signal from that time till you get the mfc whatever time gap is there between the two is nothing but memory access time that is the time taken to access any location maybe for read maybe for write that is memory access time then the next term next term is memory cycle time cycle time means what the time gap between two consecutive memory operations that means i have started performing one read operation by giving read signal after some time i will get mfc i will get the data i will take into my registers and all then i will give the address then again i will give the read signal suppose two consecutive read operations i am performing once one is completed then next instant only i am starting the next operation say so that is also read or you can perform any write basically two memory operations that twin consecutive so whenever i am performing two consecutive memory operations then the time gap between the initiation of the two consecutive memory operation is called as memory cycle time so that means the time gap between the read signal once for one operation is given then the next consecutive operation or read or write operation another is write or read operation or write operation i perform again i want to perform one write operation so the time gap between this uh, is nothing but memory cycle time right so which one will be bigger memory cycle time or access time memory cycle time will be slightly bigger than the uh, uh, memory access time then next is another important concept i am going to discuss that what is our aim our aim is to design a very big size memory as well as a faster memory but when i will do so i cannot exceed my target cost if i exceed that then my product will not be in the market if it is not in the market then uh, the idea will not be any useful so see our aim in this chapter is nothing but to provide a bigger size large size memory and a faster memory why large size memory because if the memory is large it can accommodate more number of processes in the memory and then we can keep the processor busy almost all the time because when one process is waiting for some operation maybe for some semaphore value maybe for some io operation during that time we can switch the processor to some other process so if it is present in the memory then only we can switch from that waiting process to another process so if more number of processes are there then almost all the time processor will be busy and that will give us higher throughput throughput is number of processes completed per unit time right more number of processes are there so all the time processor is busy so some computation is performing um, is getting done so by that ultimately end result will be our throughput will increase and we require a faster memory why because our processor is faster compared to memory so processor wants the data or instruction to come from memory at a faster rate then only it can perform on that right so due to that we require a faster memory so in my next video i'm going to discuss what are the concepts we are going to use for providing a large size memory as well as a faster memory till then thank you